Okay. Okay. Three, two, one. Hi. You know, something special between us is that you can understand me. Even if you don't know me, I can tell my story and you'll be able to understand. Even if you can't, somebody else will, or we can find an intermediary. This is the gift of language. Humans have the unique quality of communicating deeply rather than the surface level that animals can. Language connects people at a coffee shop, at a family gathering, in class. Strangers are close friends, but it is more than just talking because it can be with your hands. And it is more than just words because it can be emotion. And one language is powerful enough, but to have two or three is all the more special. My name is Michaela, but a lot of my friends call me Mick. I'm the sister of two brothers and the daughter of two nurses, both of whom were born and raised in the Philippines and moved to America in their mid-20s. Here, they had my two brothers and me, and they had a choice. Whether to raise us speaking their Filipino dialect of Visaya as well as English, or to only speak English around the house since the environment that we would be surrounded by later in our lives is going to be English. With fear of us falling behind in school or us not being able to make friends, they decided on going with the latter. However, they did still speak to each other in Visaya, so I do have a pretty good understanding of the language and arguably the best of the three of us. Sorry boys, love you. But in terms of my identity, I do not consider myself as a native bilingual. Now, I'm 20, and aside from my Filipino-American identity, I have also been interested in learning about different cultures. I am an American Sign Language and English Interpretation major and a French minor. I also have a hobby of following different forms of Korean media. I just love the idea that there's always something new you can learn. But the more that I learn about other people, I will always have a place of minor regret in my heart for not being completely involved with my own roots. With this, however, I don't think only my voice is enough to convince you just how important it is to raise your children to be bilingual or multilingual at that. So to help you uncertain parents about what to do about your child's linguistic futures, I reached out to some of my friends to help me. First question. What is your name? My name is Marielle. My name is JJ. Josh. Josh. Um, I know English and I know American Sign Language. I learned it later. Okay, which ones did you learn later? I learned English and Tagalog. Tagalog I learned by watching TV. English I learned at school.
I did. Well, I got surgery at three years old. That's when I started learning spoken English. And then I came to pre-K. That's when I started signing. What does being bilingual mean to you? Um, you know, learning two different languages, speaking with people who can, you know, speak and sign at the same time. Uh, it gives me an opportunity to compare both of culture and so deaf and hearing culture and helps me build a gap between. Is your sibling relationship different than your parents? It's, yes, it is very different. Why? Because um, my little sister only speaks English while the rest of the family speaks Cebuano. And I feel like it's tougher for her because she doesn't know what we're saying. She doesn't, she's not able to like join in for the conversations and all the fun stuff. So I feel like it's really tougher for her considering that she only speaks um, English because she was born here. With my older brother, it is because um, we both know, like, you know, the basics of sign language and we both can read lips. My brother is also deaf. He wears um, cochlear implants. And he's, me and him grew up speech therapy together. And that's how we learned to, like, read other people's lips. <laughs> I put on a 
It was more close for us to sign because uh, she's like she will help me a lot through growing up and she will sign interpret for me and we will have our own secret conversation so our mom can't hear us. <laughs> <laughs> Up, I thought I was like fully deaf, which I do identify myself as. But when I came to Galate, they call me hard of hearing because I can speak. But even though if I take my CI off, I'm still deaf, so it was hard for me to know which one I am. <laughs> Um, my language experience really shaped being Filipino, being like true to myself because ever since I've moved here, um, it's not really common for me to hear Tagalog or Cebuano or any other Filipino languages for that matter. So it's really a bit, um, it's like you get excitement when you hear that familiar tone, when you hear those familiar words. It's a rush of blood flow which is really cool that you don't get to experience on a day-to-day -day basis. So I can learn about my culture, the deaf culture, because um, I grew up speaking most of my life. And now that I can learn about my deaf culture, it actually made it easier for me to like, you know, communicate with others. Oh, I know. Um, sign language, like, it helps with, like, you know, making friends here at, like, Gallaudet University, because, like, when I first started out, I didn't really know anybody here, and I didn't really know how to, like, sign, but being a part of, like, you know, the football program and soccer program really helped me pick up sign language and you know making a lot of new friends so i think sports is like one of the major benefits of that
Growing up, middle school, elementary, and high school, I made a lot of friends with hearing, but I don't really hang out with a lot of deaf people in my deaf program because uh, I will say this, but uh, my, they say my education level is too high for them, so I kind of used to thought they were dumb to me growing up. So I will hang out with hearing people and I will teach them sign language to, to help communicate with me, even in high school football and sports. So. I gave them opportunity to learn sign language through me and I still have a small group of their people to sign with too and able to help them voice or interpret for them too. <laughs> um, why should a parent choose their child to be bilingual if they have all the right tools and resources? If you have access to all those language classes, to all those right tools, to all those like resources, language teachers, language books, then I think that you should really go for it. You have the opportunity to learn it. Why not just go for it? Um, even though I am someone who is sp fluently speaking three languages, I'm still learning a fourth language because I want to learn. I, I And again, I want to be able to communicate. I want to be able to order food or tell the Macy's manager or department store manager that she's doing a good job in her native tongue. Because once you hear your native tongue, it's like a piece of home is with you. So I feel like, and as humans, I feel like that it, that would allow us to connect with one another better whether you be um, African-American, whether you be Asian, Hispanic, white, you, they, language just brings people together. You just have to be open to learning it. I think that it, it'll benefit them in the future. Um, just cause like, you know, maybe they have someone in their family who is deaf and learn sign language, or maybe they have someone that is, you know, from Mexico, from the Philippines, and you know it's important to like learn that language you know, and be a part of that culture. I think parents shouldn't turn to any crime if you have a child and to all of these individuals I have handpicked to tell a little bit about their story. I have had the pleasure of getting to know all of them during the course of this semester, and I look up to each and every one of them for their language skills. One thing I have noticed upon interviewing my multilingual friends is that each of their perspectives of life is unique, completely shaped by their language usage growing up. They all define bilingualism differently, their familiar relationships and friendships completely differ, and even their concept of communication contrasts from one another. Personally, sign language is not my first language, but because of my curiosity and their open-mindedness, I have proved to myself that language is what connects people. I recognize that I'm not limited to only people who speak English. I'm continuously presented with experiences that I could have never dreamed of if I was limited to one avenue of communication. For any child's future, I encourage the same feeling of solidarity in their lives, and I know that bond would be strengthened if the child was exposed to both languages at birth.